Hey everybody, welcome to Northwest Family Church Online. Here we are here in our living room yep. with our faithful dog Tiger who's <laughs> waving against his will. <laughs> so glad that you're here and whether you're a regular part of our church or uh, you don't really even have a church yet, it doesn't matter, we're just glad you're here and we're, we're going to be growing our faith together and uh, I'm, I'm just glad you're here, this is awesome. Yeah, and at NFC we're all about sharing Jesus and growing together and one of the ways that we can be together this morning is to interact on YouTube. Yeah. So I want to invite you to go ahead and give us comments of how God is speaking to you or even just shout out and give us a hi and let us know that you're uh, a part of our yeah. service today. Yeah, uh, we want to hear from you. Yeah, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on any good content that's coming up. And I think that's it. So what's yeah, next? we are going to worship together now. So we're going to send it over to Stephen and Taylor, and they're going to lead us in worship from their living room. I want to invite you to go ahead and join in with us. Yes. Good morning, NFC. Hope you're doing well this morning. And I've got to be honest, I kind of love that we're just kind of learning how to roll with the punches a little bit with you know just everything that's going around in the world it just it serves as a good reminder for us I think that God can't be put in a box God isn't stuck in a room but he's with us you know we, we talk about going to church but reality is we are the church you know and wherever you are that's where God is God's with you he doesn't leave you he doesn't abandon you in the moments where it gets stressful or hard and I know at least for me, worship has been one of those things in my life where when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling hopeless, when I don't know what to do, even in the great times, there, there's something anchoring, something that's uh, it's grounding to worship. It's grounding to welcome God into my life and look for His presence because He's so faithful, you know? He, he loves to spend time with us and He loves to spend time with you. You know, this morning, I know you may be in your home or your car or wherever you're watching this. We're in our living room holding our baby because that's the only way we think maybe she won't cry <laughs> during this video. But, uh, you know, in the midst of it, God is here. God's with us. And, you know, whatever's going on around you, I just encourage you, don't let the distractions be so loud in your ear that you can't hear God because He wants to speak to you. He wants you to feel His presence and His peace right where you're at. So, as we worship this morning, just give him that opportunity. Sing together. Sing, you're here. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in. I worship you, I worship you, come on, let's sing that again, you are here, you are here, moving in our midst, and I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you. I worship you, and you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. So you are, you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is are here, touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. Are here, men 
Rending every heart I worship you I worship you You are way maker Miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God That is who you are And you are way maker Miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God That is who you are 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 Turn it for good. You take. 
I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you. Amen. We believe that. Yes. You are going to see yeah. a victory. Let's claim that. Let's believe that. Yeah. Let's act like that. Yes. So yes. good to worship the Lord together. And let's just, let's go right into a time of prayer. Would you just quiet yourself right where you are? And let's talk to God. Let's, let's pray together. Let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful that you are constant, that you are with us no matter where we are or what we're going through. And Lord God, we do believe what we've just been singing, Lord, that we are going to see a victory, that Lord, you do make a way when there seems to be no way, and that Lord God, you are faithful and true. And so Lord God, I know that many of us have different things that are going on in our lives, some related to all of the, the situation with the COVID-19, and some just of just normal life lord and and so god we're coming to you right now we're asking lord that you're going to meet us where we're at lord i pray for those specifically that are dealing with anxiety and are feeling uh just like there's just so many unknowns lord god i pray that you would give peace beyond understanding that's what your word says you have for people lord and so god i pray that you would give this to people uh even now lord in our living rooms lord that we would just sense your mighty presence falling in, in our houses, Lord God. And Lord God, I pray for those, Lord, that are feeling the strain financially. Lord, I pray that you would meet needs. Lord, we're thankful with, for what the government is doing and, and the different ways that we are, are getting income. But Lord, we're going to remember that you are really our source. And so, Lord, we're going to trust you. We're going to depend on you. We're, we're relying on you, Lord, to provide in mighty ways for us. And Lord, we had some of our people in our congregation, people that are friends that have been going through health uh, situations already before all of this uh, pandemic started. And Lord, I pray you protect them today, Lord God. Uh, those that are going through chemo and, and recovering from surgeries and just different things, Lord, I pray that you would put your hand on them, protect them, Lord. And Lord, uh, I pray that you would you would be with all of those who are experiencing coronavirus right yeah. now, that they're, they're feeling, Lord, I pray for healing right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. And, and for those who are our are, are public leaders, Lord, our government leaders and health leaders, Lord, we just lift them up. Lord, as a leader, I know it must be so hard. And Lord, I pray that you would give them wisdom, Lord, at every crossroads, that they would do the right thing, the most helpful thing, Lord. And you know what that is. So, Lord, I pray that you would lead them. Yeah. Lord, I pray for those who work in hospitals and people who are first responders and people that are administering tests and just yeah. people working in labs. There's so many people that are being exposed to this virus. Lord, protect them. Yes, Lord, help them. Bless them. Give them strength when they're tired, Lord God. Yeah. Lord, we love you. We praise you, Lord God. Yes. And Lord God, I pray that you would reveal yourself to us, Lord. I pray that we would have uh, just a uh, uh, that we would be paying attention to how you want to speak to us, Lord, in the situations that each of us are going through. Some of us are staying home. Some of us are out working in the midst of it all, Lord. But God, I pray that you would help us to have eyes to see what yes. you want us to yes, see, yes. that we would think of others, yes. Lord, yes. that we would uh, have our, our hearts set on what you want to do in us, Lord. Maybe you want to teach us to, to trust you in a deeper way or, or uh, be more attentive to uh, praying with you or looking in your word and, and hearing from you. But God, I pray that during this season that we would know that we have met with you and that you're speaking in our lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, Lord we just pray a blessing on every person yes. who is tuning in today, yes, Lord. Uh, Lord, you are a God of blessing. Yeah. You are a God that desires the best for yes. us. And we live in a broken world. And Lord, I just pray your blessing in the midst of it all, yes, Lord God. Lord. Uh, Lord, most of all, blessing of closeness to you and closeness to each yeah. other, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. 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 Well, good. Well, I, I think we're going to go and, and meet some of our our other pastors. Yes. Uh, pastors uh, Brandon and Elaine. Yep. Uh, let's, uh, you guys, take it away. 
Hey, thank you for joining us today. Please be sure to uh, post comments uh, throughout yeah. this live stream so that way we uh, can connect with each other um, and uh, be sure to subscribe to the NFC YouTube page as well as hit the bell to get notifications. Um, every time that we post a video, then you'll be notified um, so that way we can stay connected. Also, if you are first time guest with us today, we invite you, um, we encourage you to, to text new, the number two, NFC, so new to NFC to 97000. Um, and then we will reach out to you uh, to let you know all that's going on here at NFC. Yes. Another way we want to stay connected is through praying for you. So yeah. you can send your prayer request to 253 733 1640 and text what's going on if we will pray for you we're we're normally praying for you on mondays but honestly if we have those requests we're praying for you throughout the week uh, we really want to stay a part of your life and what's going on and praying for you is a big way that we can do that uh, another thing that's going on you don't want to miss is online bible studies are starting up uh, get signed up on the app or the website this is a way that we can connect face to face have prayer together time together make some relationships during this time. And also it's through Zoom, so we'll, we'll actually get to see each other as we're going through this study. It's gonna be a really great time. Hey guys, some of the Virtus is here. We're so excited you're here joining us for our online service. Yeah, and we're hoping that you're staying healthy and entertained while we're all stuck here <laughs> in our own homes. We can't wait till we can all meet together, which we'll definitely hopefully do sooner than later. And we're praying for all of you. We love you so much. Okay, bye. 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 bye, NFC. We're so excited to be worshiping with you this morning, and I can't wait until we can see each other face to face again. Bye. 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 It is generosity time. We have a core value that we live generously through serving and through giving. And I love what it says in the Bible in 1 Thessalonians 1 2. It says this We always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. As we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just wanna say a big thank you to all of those who have continued to give or have begun to give and, and contribute to the ministries of Northwest Family Church during this crazy time when we're not gathering physically together, we're just gathering online. And uh, I, I just, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. We, we still have building costs, utilities, and staff, and missionaries to support, and just all those things, you know, keep going on. And, and I just wanna thank you to all those who have been so faithful to give. Uh, there's even some people that uh, used to be a part of our church, but they moved away and they gave during this time. And man, I just say thank you so much. You have been so generous. And I, I just encourage you, if you have never given before, if you've never contributed, I, I invite you to give it a whirl. Uh, you can just go to nfcgive.com uh, or, or give on our Northwest Family Church app. And it's very easy to, to set it up and give. Uh, my wife Shelly and I, we give uh, to our church every single, uh, every single pay period. And uh, so we're, we're all in this together. And, and I just wanted to echo Paul's words in the Bible and say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. I appreciate it. I just want to pray a blessing on you, Lord. I, I just pray your blessing on all those who give and all those who sacrifice. And uh, Lord, I, I just thank you for them, Lord. I pray that you would pour out your blessings on them because your word says that you reward faithfulness and you reward generosity. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it is uh, my privilege and joy to turn it over to CJ Whitco, our associate pastor, and he is going to bring a, an inspiring message from God's word for you today. So uh, get out your phones and take some notes. It's going to be good. Thanks, Pastor Garen. Um, what do you do when your routine is disrupted? Uh, my family and I have gone through a lot of change the last couple weeks. We just had our third baby, Eloise is here, and uh, it was a pretty crazy experience. We went to <clears throat> just a routine prenatal appointment, and that, that ended up being, uh, uh, we got induced there, so um, right there. So uh, there were just minor complications, and so we thought it would just be best to, to get to deliver. And, um, you know, for us, this is our third baby, and so I kind of feel like, 
once it's your third, it's it's kind of like I, I know what to expect, I, like I got it. And it's kind of funny, I had a lot of different people giving me advice about the third baby. And a lot of people, it was like, third baby man, that's, that's just the one. It's the one that is just makes all life crazy. And then I had other people that were like, you know, once you're at three, it's kind of like, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> It's just kind of game over anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I think four, five, six, doesn't matter. After after three, it's just, yeah, doesn't matter. So, so I didn't really know what to expect, but um, I can tell you what, at the hospital, um, I felt like a pro. I felt like professional dad. I, I knew all the terminology. The doctor comes in, is like talking about different medicines and I understand and I'm there and I know how to, how to uh, help Nicole and labor process and I know where stuff is, I know where the bathroom is, I know where the cafe is. You're looking for the cafe, let me tell you where it is. Just go down the hall, to the right, to the left, through the stairs, through the stairs, <laughs> through the doors, <laughs> up the stairs, to the left, down the hall, it's on the right, it's open from seven to seven. Today's special is a uh, pesto chicken sandwich on a ciabatta roll. They stop taking orders 30 minutes before they close, so make sure your order is in before that. You know, I, I'm a pro. I know how it works. I know how to take care of babies. This is my third one. I know how to take care of my wife and my family. We got it. And honestly, I did not feel a disruption in the routine, um, uh, really, until this last week. <laughs> And it's kind of funny, uh, for some reason, this last time change, no one in our family could adjust. Our kids did not adjust. They are still in the previous time change. We could not adjust. And that was a routine change for us. And you add to that routine change uh, the fact that Eloise, she's sweet and precious, but also she, uh, she is an infant and um, she does keep us up at night. And so, you know, it's an average of, you know, three to five hour, uh, hours of sleep a night for um, Nicole, I get my full hours. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I help Nicole too. Oh man, some of you are judging me hard right now. Stop. And um, so, anyway, what am I talking about? Uh, disruption. I, <laughs> so, this last week, we started to really feel the, the disruption of the routine. I especially felt it. It was just been a really weird week, um, this week and the week prior. And on Sunday, you know, we were doing the live stream, uh, getting ready to do it at the church and stuff, and we did a rehearsal the night before, and at the rehearsal, I smelled something. And, you know, it, let's just be real. Sometimes, you know, it's like you didn't take a shower before you made it to rehearsal, that's okay. And uh, I didn't know who it was. There was a handful of people there. And so I thought, hmm, that's all right. It's not that bad. And so it's fine. And, um, you know, uh, just deal with it. And then I, uh, I went home and I smelled the same thing. And then Lila came up to me, my daughter, and she's like, Daddy, I smell something. <laughs> and I realized it was me. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, man, I realized that uh, my routine, my regular routine of just even simply uh, what I do in the morning to get ready and stuff, uh, what has been compromised. And that's the truth. When it comes to routine, um, when it's disrupted, the, the problem with that is it has the opportunity to really wreck all of the disciplines in our life. We can lose purpose. We can lose intentionality. So what do you do when your routine is disrupted? There's a really popular book out uh, called Atomic Habits. And in that book, James Clear discusses the power of habits and routine. And that really, all of our disciplines, our personality, and our character is built on the power of small habits and or what we build into our routine. So when that routine is disrupted, it has the potential to really mess us up. So what do you do when your routine is disrupted? Uh, I know that um, there's a couple of common responses. One is we, we respond with anxiety and panic. Routine is disrupted. What are we going to do? Um, is it going to be like this forever? <laughs> you know, and uh, we can be afraid. Another common response to disruption in routine is um, grief. Uh, Pastor Garen preached a really great message on Vision Day about change and how all change is loss. Um, and we can like the way that it was before. 
And when, when it's abundantly clear to us that that routine that we had before is no longer attainable, we can grieve. So grief can be a normal response to a disruption in routine. Another common response is control. I'm going to take control of this situation. I'm going to make a plan. I'm going to make it happen. It's going to work. It's going to be fine. And we have the same expectations, even though the circumstances have drastically changed. And, um, and that, that also is really, really painful. But uh, the one that I find really interesting and kind of funny is uh, when there's a disruption in routine, what can happen is our disciplines dissipate. And uh, we tend to, to just kind of relax, let loose, and um, binge watch Netflix, and just you know, sleep in, or um, you know, whatever it may be. And uh, uh, we saw this clip on the news a little while ago. I want to share it with you. Just before the first flakes fell, people in North Mecklenburg County prepared to be snowed in for the weekend. But agree, a weekend wave of snow will mean less people on the slick roads. We'll probably sit around and cook some soups and eat bread and desserts and just get all fat and sassy. <laughs> uh, so let's talk the coronavirus. All of us have had a disruption in our routine. All of us are at home more than we uh, probably have ever been before. And uh, there's more people in our house than probably ever before kids are at home, all, our spouse is at home, or um, our friends are there, or our family's there, or whatever. Or maybe you're there by yourself, and you're there more often than you usually are. Um, either way, you have experienced a disruption in the routine. And it's caused by the worldwide pandemic of the coronavirus. And it's really interesting to me to see how people are responding to the coronavirus, the overwhelming response. What I read on social media, what I read in the news, what I hear in conversation, it's, it's, it's a conversation that's kind of like this. What are we going to do as individuals? What are we going to do as a nation? Um, what does this mean for our future? What does this mean for the economy? What does this mean for retirement? What, does, what about our jobs? You know, uh, I just saw on the news that there are millions, literally millions of, of jobs, uh, people who have lost their jobs. What are we going to do about our jobs? You know, what are we going to do for income? Why aren't the millennials and Gen Z taking this seriously? Why, why are they still messing around and not social distancing? <clears throat> why are people buying all the toilet paper? Some of us actually need toilet paper. Well, I didn't get any before paternity leave. We actually need toilet paper. Uh, you know, <laughs> why, why are we responding this way? And that is the overwhelming conversation. And what's interesting to me is how little I hear this conversation and this question asked. This is the most important spiritual question for us to ask, especially during times like this where our routine is disrupted. God, what are you showing me in this? God, what are you doing in this? What are you doing in the world? What are you doing in our nation? What are you doing in my life? What do you want to show me? The truth is that everything that we face has the potential to teach us something about God or ourselves. And the truth is, is that even if we didn't plan it, God did. Um, every change of plan was planned by God. God has purpose and intention for this. He, he has plans for the coronavirus. He has a plan for you. He is not shocked by this. He has incredible purpose for you. And um, it's important for us to stay connected to God's purpose. That's the title of the message this morning. Staying connected to God's purpose purpose. Every change of plan was planned by God. God has intention in every occasion and purpose in every problem. And the bottom line of my message, I already said it once, but it's simply this. If we just, if we just let this sink into our soul and let it guide our thoughts, feelings, and actions, I really believe that we would find peace, we'd find hope, we'd find wisdom on what we're supposed to do. It's just this one truth. It's this. Every problem we face has the potential to teach us something about God and ourselves. So therefore, we must always be ready to ask the question, God, what are you showing me in this? What are you showing me in this? 
One of my favorite passages of scripture is James 1, uh, 2 through 4. It says this, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I love this scripture for so many reasons, and it can preach so many incredible sermons, but this last time reading this, this passage, what really stood out to me was that the author James here immediately associates troubles, trials of any kind, which by the way, that, that word troubles of any kind, it really does mean any kind of trouble that we experience. Uh, trials, tribulations, persecutions, things within our control, things with, uh, outside of our control, all things, all things that we experience. Um, James immediately connects that to faith. Immediately. It's right there. Um, consider an opportunity for great joy, for you know that when your faith is tested. So the troubles and trials and issues that we have are not really about us and the trial and the issue as much about us and our faith. Every issue we face is an issue of faith. Every issue we face is an issue of faith. Uh, one of my favorite books um, written by our network leader right now, his name is Don Ross, called uh, Turnaround Pastor. He talks about this profound moment he had uh, when he was pastoring where God revealed to him that all the problems he was facing, all the issues that he was having was really not about him and those. It was really about him and God. God was wanting to speak to him. God was wanting to show him things about God and about himself. And uh, what he wrote is this, whatever problem you're facing is more about you and Jesus than you and the problem. Every issue we face is an issue of faith. And so because of that, we can have great confidence knowing that even, even in the issues and the disruptions of routine, the problems that we face, that, that God has purpose in those. And we can stay connected to God's purpose. Another really cool scripture I want to share with you this morning is Ephesians 5.16. And it says this, Paul, Paul is, uh, uh, the context is that Paul is making a long list of all of the exhortations, all of the things that um, we should do as people who follow Jesus. And, and um, it's really encouraging. Um, and he, sa he says, we, we are to make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil in Ephesians 5.16. And when you look at a literal translation of this, it, it literally means when, to make the most of every opportunity um, to buy back the time. Buy back the time. Redeem it. And uh, I, I love that because it, it speaks to the, that the issues and the problems that we face, are, it's not the end all. It's not like this is the final say. We have an opportunity and an obligation to redeem it, to buy it back. And, uh, and that is part of staying connected to God's purpose. Just because things are happening and it wasn't what we planned and this is, this is painful and it's difficult and we face trials and people get sick and, and, and we might lose our job or whatever, at the end of the day, we have the opportunity and the obligation to redeem those things. I want to say uh, also that um, it does say here, it qualifies that it's, it's because the days are evil. And in a sermon like this, it's really easy for us to start thinking, this is one of those messages that's kind of like, um, there's, there's a, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. And that, that sounds great. Everything happens for a reason. That, that sounds great. Um, but the truth is, is that it does not take note of the fact that sometimes the reason is because of the days are evil. Because it's evil. And um, I think that's a really important thing to note. 
you know, uh, because if you can take that kind of idea way out of context and say, you know, the Holocaust happened for a reason, everything happens for a reason, Holocaust happened for a reason, World War II happened for a reason, Twin Towers happened for a reason, you, you got sick, happened for a reason, someone died, happened for, and it's, it does not take into note that just because it happened and God has purpose in it, that, that God wants it or that God doesn't see the pain and recognize the evil days. The Bible is very clear. It, it recognizes that this is not, this is not static. This is dynamic and we're at war and there is evil here and bad things happen. And I just want to take a second and I want to qualify the pain you're experiencing. I'm sorry you're experiencing it. And sometimes bad things happen and God recognizes it and God sees you and God loves you. And there's, there's a lot more that could be said there, but I'm going to let the Holy Spirit just lift you up. This truth brings incredible hope to those who are experiencing pain. Even if the enemy, even if this is evil, even if there is something uh, in the heavens that is causing this, you know, just like Job, like he, he, when Job went through all of the things that he was facing, he didn't know what was going on in the heavens. And that was God's rebuke to him. So like, Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth, man? You have no idea what I'm doing. But you can know that I am doing, that I do have purpose. And you can hold fast to that purpose. And if you really believe that I'm good, and if you really believe that I'm in control, and that I saw this coronavirus, and I saw the pain that you're experiencing, and I planned for that, then we can have hope that his plans are always good. God does not delight in evil. He doesn't delight it when you experience pain. God does not delight in evil, but he has planned for it. And that gives us great hope. God has planned for all the things you experience personally. And God has planned the history of all humanity and the future. Do you want to know what God's cosmic plan is? Do you want to know how he's going to uh, bring all this about for good? He showed us his mysterious plan and, uh, that plan is Jesus. Jesus is the plan. Jesus redeemed the days. Um, Jesus is God's son. God sent his son to earth to save us all. When he was here, he, in a, in a world full of sin, Jesus redeemed it by offering forgiveness. In a world full of judgment, he offers grace. Uh, in the presence of accusers, he is our advocate. Jesus is our redemption. And that redemption is not just for the days past and the days current, but there is a profound, incredible future hope that all followers of Jesus have. And that is the hope, the belief that Jesus is going to redeem all things in the future. And uh, I want to read to you, check this out. This is Revelation 20, 11 through 15. And I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done, as rec recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead. And all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Jesus redeems all things. All things evil. All things done in secret. He brings about, he brings about redemption for all his people who have experienced pain. 
When things are out of your control, you can trust that Jesus will bring your redemption. Even the marginalized, manipulated, misunderstood, mistreated, and martyred will be redeemed at the end of the age by Jesus. We will stand before a great white throne. And for those who have put their faith in Jesus, we will be judged righteous. And God will make all things right. All things will be made right. Therefore, we can hold on to this hope. This is a verse found in Romans 8.18. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. So what do we do right now? You know, we're sitting here. Some of us are in pain. Some of us are just lackadaisical, <laughs> getting fat and sassy. All of us have experienced a change of plans. <clears throat> so what are we going to do? We can put our hope and our trust in Jesus. And we can look at this time and see that God has a plan. God has a purpose. And we can stay connected to that purpose. Amen. I want to give you just some practical uh, things that you could do. Just three things to stay connected to God's purpose during this time. Um, one is this, make a habit, a new routine starting right now where you ask Jesus all the time, Jesus, what are you trying to show me in this? Jesus, what are you trying to show me in this? What are you trying to teach me? And allow him to speak, allow him to give you wisdom, allow him to uh, show you that what you're experiencing right now, these trials, these troubles, these issues that you're having is not really an issue of that you're facing as much as it is an issue of faith. That God wants to show you things about himself and about yourself. It's a good purpose. I also encourage you to stay connected to your church. Stay connected to your church. We have been uh, just moving everything to an online platform, so we can still stay connected even when we're not gathering. One of the cool ways we can do that is by uh, plugging into the new um, uh, live online Bible studies. And those are happening at different times throughout the week. And you can just go on our website, register, sign up. And I really encourage you to do that. Stay connected to God's purpose. And another thing that um, you can do is you can stay connected to God's mission. Uh, we all have a mission. We are all here on purpose. We are not here to waste time. And God, the mission is to share Jesus and grow together. And we can do that even right now. And it's like, man, how can we share Jesus? How can we spread the message of hope? How can we encourage people when we're stuck at home? And uh, I really believe that this is a profound opportunity for us to do something out of the box. And that is this idea to uh, start calling or texting people that you haven't talked to in a while. Maybe an old friend from high school or college or, or someone that is just distant, that you've grown distant and reconnect with them offer to pray for them and invite them to our live stream service for Easter, which is coming right up. And in this way, we can, we can share Jesus. Um, I'd, I'd like to take a second and as we wrap up, I, I wanna pray for you. And maybe you're here right now and you don't have hope. Your hope is, is entirely dependent upon your ability. It's dependent upon how hard you work. And you have not found that Jesus is our savior. He offers hope, he off offers life that is not dependent on your works, it is dependent on your faith. And if you're here, you're listening, and you feel like, I, I wanna make a decision to follow Jesus right now. I'm, I'm done just trying to do this on my own and be my own savior and figure it out for myself. There is no better time than right now to become a follower of Jesus. And if that's you, I, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to repeat after me. We're going to pray right now. And uh, 
I know that there are, there are lots of people listening and a part of this right now. You are not by yourself if you're making this decision. And I'm going to ask everybody, uh, wherever you are and whatever house you're at, to encourage and pray with those people out loud right now who are making this decision. If you want to become a follower of Jesus, just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are God. I surrender my life to you. I choose to follow you all the days of my life. Forgive me of all of my sin. I surrender my own purposes and I will live for your purposes. Make me right with you. In Jesus' name, amen. And guess what? If you prayed that prayer just now and you, you believe that in your heart, our word says that if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that you will be saved. So I'm, so I'm so happy to tell you that God loves you, that you, you have a hope now. This hope that I was just talking about this morning is now yours. And I encourage you to also get connected, um, plug in, um, uh, text the, the, the number below and um, be connected. And we'd love to just pray for you. I also would love to pray for you if you, if you are a Jesus follower, but you are just having a rough time, you're in pain, um, and I, I just want to give you some hope and uh, just come alongside you and pray with you. So if that's you, uh, I just encourage you to just, uh, just receive this. Dear Jesus, I pray for all my friends right now who are in pain. And God, really our world is in pain. And so many uh, people are looking for purpose. They're looking for, for some kind of way like, God, well, how could this happen? But God, I pray that we would see beyond this issue and see right into your purpose. We'd see right into your good plan, your good intention. And I pray, God, that we would hold firmly to our confident hope. Pray that you lift up my friends right now, encourage them, and help us stay connected to your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, CJ. What a great word. And I, I just encourage you to be thinking about that message during the week. He has really given us a framework for looking at the strange, strange days that we are in right now. And, and what a great way to approach it. Thank you so much, Pastor CJ. It, it's, it's really important that we connect during these times. You know, uh, even if it's just online, let's do it. Let's, yeah. let's take every opportunity. So a reminder, if you are new with us, we'd love to hear that you connected with us yeah. today. So just go ahead and text NEW and the number 2 NFC to 97000. And um, that will just uh, let us know who you are and a little bit more information. And uh, we would love to hear that you connected with us and are new with us. And if there's anything that we can pray with you about, yeah. every single week we collect all the prayer requests yeah. that have come in and we pray for you. And yeah. we want to pray for you specifically, not, right. not just generally. We're already praying for you generally. So let us know. Uh, you can just text your prayer need mm -hmm. to 253, that's kind of our local area code, 253-733-1640. Yeah. And we'll get those and we'll, we'll uh, pray for you specifically. Right. And a reminder that our online Bible studies start tonight. Yeah. Um, so it starts Sunday and then we've got a few going on throughout the week. Be sure and sign up and then you'll get one of those emails or texts to invite you to join us on Zoom. And we'll be able to see each other and talk to each other so and look at God's word together, or even watch a video together. So it's really a, a great opportunity. Yeah, sign up on the app or sign up on the website. Either one, yes. very easy to yeah. do. And uh, don't forget that uh, even though this was a live stream, we still have Kids Church waiting for you at Kids yes. Church Online, yeah. age graded. So we have one, a version for the littler kids and one for the older kids. Uh, so check that out and I encourage you to interact, to participate yep. as a family. Yeah. Well, that is it for today um, and we are so glad you joined us. We invite you to come back next week. Until we hear otherwise, we're going to keep streaming um, uh, live at 1030 on Sunday. Yeah. So join us next week. We'll look for you. God bless you. See ya.